Amen, amen. I want to ask you a question. Who is the greatest? Ask your neighbor, who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? Well, way back in the 19, early 60s, there was a man called Cassius Clay, a.k.a. Ali. And he told all of the world, he said, I am the greatest. <laughs> He told his opponents that he could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. And what their, and, and, and their hands couldn't hit, what their eyes couldn't see. But, come on, let everybody say but. Mm -hmm. But his greatness originated from what he did on canvas mats in a boxing ring. Can I get a witness? Yes. Secondly, when I talk about greatness, and it comes to my mind, two young girls from Compton, California, and they went from the public parks to parks practicing and practicing and, and working on public uh, courts. And they eventually went to the top of the world. Can I get a witness? And one of them, Serena, we're talking about Venus and Serena, she statistically is the greatest Grand Slam player of all time. But overall, great, their greatness was created and started on tennis courts. Can I get another witness? See, if I had time, I could spend all day talking about great people and great things that they did and great accomplishments. I could talk about things uh, that happened in the world from the Red Hills of Georgia to the Pennsylvania Avenue, from the Red Sea to the Great Lakes of Michigan, actually where Serena was born. I could talk about Great things that happened on Bunker Hill to Capitol Hill. I could talk about things that happened on Damascus Road to Hadley Road. Can I get a witness? And I could go on and on and on and on, but I won't do that because I want you to still be here when I finish this sermon. Can I get a witness? Most importantly today, I do want you to know that it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to have a bronze or silver or gold medal around your neck to be considered great. A person that doesn't have a, a wear a, a gold jacket or uh, have uh, be uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame um, that wear, you don't have to be a person that wears the green jacket and say you want a master's or uh, you, uh, everybody doesn't have to uh, win an Oscar or receive an Emmy, but, let me hear you say but, 
See, we got butt again. But I'm sure you know some people in your own family, like mama, like grandmama, like daddy, like grandpa. I'm sure you know people in your family, if not in your family, your church family. I'm sure you know somebody that God has to care for you. Can I get a witness? And I know that some of you know people uh, in your family that are even greater than the people that I have already mentioned. Can I get a witness? Amen. See, I'm, I'm talking about people uh, that you heard of, but I'm talking about now people that you know. People that raised you when you couldn't do for yourself. Can I get a witness? It takes greatness to do that. It takes love to do that. My Sermonic, sermonic text comes from Matthew, the 23rd chapter and the 11th verse, where Jesus warns religious leaders, namely the scribes and the Pharisees, about their leadership. And he was uh, warning them that their leadership was more interested about serving it in themselves than others. 23 and 11, Jesus said, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And he told them that those who exalted themselves would be humbled. And those that humbled themselves, they would be exalted. Can I get a witness? You see, church, ironically, Jesus' view of greatness was much different as to how the world and these religious leaders thought it to be. And yes, the Bible does say give honor to whom honor is due. But let me hear you say but again. But see, honor and awards are not given to a person for what they receive but because of what they have given. Can I get another witness? It's all right to think high of yourself. It's all right. The Bible says it's all right to think high of oneself, but you never should think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Can you say amen? amen. See, even when the disciples argued with one another about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus used a little child as an example to make his point and highlight their self-centeredness, their selfishness, their pride, and their egos. Mm -hmm. Jesus got a little child. And he said, and he told them that he, when they asked him who is the greatest in heaven, Jesus called a little child in Matthew 18, 1 through 4. If you have your Bibles, you could find it sometime and read it. Uh, he, and Jesus called that little child. He set that little child in the midst of them. And he said, verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as this little ch as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven uh -huh. and he said whosoever therefore shall humble himself himself herself y'all selves myself everybody Amen. shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Here the disciples were arguing about petty issues. They were acting childish. But he wanted them to be childlike. Can I get a witness? Which means that, that he wanted them to be humble 
And he wanted them to have sincere hearts like a child. Now let me ask you another question. Are you childish or childlike when it comes to serving the Lord? Another great person in the Bible is Moses. If you look at Numbers 12 and 3, it says that Moses was a very humble man. More humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. Yes, Moses was humble. He was great. And he did great things. But, let me hear you say but. <laughs> but the Bible lets us know that there is one even greater than he. And when I say that name Moses, I know everybody knows something about Moses. Can I get a witness? And, and see, but when you get a time, get time, I want you to read Hebrews 3, 1 through 4. Uh, I won't read it all, but uh, uh, Hebrews says, but Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses. Just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Now we know the Bible says that all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And, I, and we here we know that everything God made is good. Uh, uh, we consider ourselves as being good in the eyesight of God who has no respect to person. Everything that he made is good. But that goodness can only come out when we humble ourselves and then God will exalt us. But if we exalt ourselves, the Bible says a base. In other words, God will bring you down. He will bring you down to the ground. All because of foolish and selfish pride in one's mind. Can I get a witness? But he that humbles himself. Moses did great things because he was a humble man. The most humble man on the face of the earth that led millions of people. And brought them out of bondage that they had been in for over 400 years. That's a great man. Can I get a witness? But see, and then it goes on, but everything God and Jesus, Jesus was God. See, uh, Jesus was God incarnate. He was personified. He was God alive, embodied in a man's body. So no matter who you talk about, whether it be Moses, whether it be David, uh, 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 whether, whether, whether it be Paul, uh, uh, whether it be Joshua, uh, uh, whether it be women, Deborah, prophetess, Deborah, uh, uh, women, uh, Mary. But the greatest one is Jesus. Come on, let me hear you say Jesus. When, when Paul talked to the church of Philippi and wanted them to be great. He told them that they needed to have the attitude that Christ had. Can I get a witness? As the New Living uh, Translation puts it, he told him, don't be selfish. Tell somebody, don't be selfish. He said, don't try to impress others. Come on, said, don't try to impress others. But, but tell them, be humble. This is what Paul says in Philippians uh, 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 4. He said, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ had. Paul told them in the King James Version, let this mind be in you. 
which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to unto death, even the death of the cross. See, Jesus was humble. Jesus was the son of God, but he humbled himself. He made no reputation of himself. And when I think of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I know and I have learned, I have heard about that man named Jesus. Have anybody, when you was a child growing up, didn't they talk about the man named Jesus? Well, see, I heard, but one day I got an uh, appointment with him. I heard, and one day I got a relationship with that man called Jesus. I can remember the day. It was February the 28th, 1993. I was sitting right over there on the organ, and that was the day that I heard the voice of the Lord in my ear and knocking on the doors of my heart. And I got up on that morning I came and I gave my life to the Lord and he converted me he changed me old things have passed away and all things have become new how many of you can remember that day how many of you can remember the hour how many of you can remember when you accepted the Lord Jesus can you say yeah what's his name what's his name what's his name his name is Jesus. And when I think about Jesus and when I think about how great he is, I think about that old hymn that a, a Swedish poet and minister wrote way back in the 1800s. And one of the a few lyrics of that song, it said, Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, the power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great, how great, how great. Let me hear you say how great, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great. How great thou art. He wasn't, on a, uh, he wasn't on a tennis court. He wasn't in a boxing ring. But he did the hanging. He hung on the cross for you and I that we might have a right to the tree of life. Let me hear you say, how great, how great, how great, how great thou art. Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app cash tag Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station.